To do the will of God is, you gotta get that in the song. To do the will of God is to keep his commandments. So let's get some other commandments that are destroying our bodies and our communities that we may not be aware of. I wanna ask you, brother, something, something simple. What are your diets like? What is something you like to eat? What are your diets like? I wanna show you something. What, what, do, what do you like to eat? What is your diet like? I eat everything except pork. You eat everything except pork. What about you, sir? What do you what do you like to eat? Vegetables, fruit. Ve that's, you just eat vegetables and fruit, that's uh, it? No, uh, I, I don't eat no pork meat. Okay. It's clean food. Oh, so you don't eat any uh, pork meat, just clean food. So yeah. you eat, eat seafoods, things like that? Uh, fish. Just fish? Yeah, but fish that you take the scales scale on. All praises right. to the most high. We're going to show you the law that you keep. Let's get that Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7. All praises. Watch this. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 9. These are ye, these, these shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever has fins and scales in the waters and in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. All praise to the most high. So, sir, you are keeping that law right there. If you were breaking that law, so, sir, do you eat anything in the water or the seas outside of fish with fins and scales? So what 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 else, what do you out eat else do you eat outside of in the water? Crabs. You do? Alright, watch this. Verse 10. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers of all the moving of all that move in the water and of any living thing that is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. So the Lord said these things are to be an abomination unto you. So if you eat crabs, you know what crabs eat? Everything. Everything. So what do you mean you eat? Everything. So all the junk and garbage in the water that's supposed to that the crabs supposed to eat to keep the waters clean, you are taking those toxins into your body. So solely what's gonna happen to you? Didn't they also say something about that you can't eat stuff? What is gonna happen to you for eating unclean things? We're gonna ask the question. I guess it's going to affect my body. It's going to affect your body in a negative way. We're going to show you. 1 Corinthians uh, 3 and 16. We're going to show you that. It's going to affect your body in a negative way. If you're taking abominations into your body, and it's going to destroy your body, watch this. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. So ye are the temple of God, the Spirit of God should be dwelling in you. That spirit is on the commandments of God. The commandments of God tell you not to eat the unclean thing out of the seas. Read. If any man defile the temple of God. So if you defile yourself with these unclean foods, such as crabs, read. Him shall God destroy. God should do what? Him shall God destroy. Why should God destroy you for eating those unclean things? Go to Sirach 15, 13. Because the Lord called you eating those unclean things. He called it an abomination. So what do you do? Why would God kill something that he called an abomination? Watch this. The book of Sirach, chapter 15, verse 13. The Lord hateth all abomination. The Lord does what? The Lord hateth all abomination. The Lord thy God, your God, hateth abominations. So that thing that you're taking into yourself is an abominable thing. So if you're taking abominations, what does that make you? It makes you an abomination, and the God will destroy you. Well, what, what will he destroy you with? Let's get the plagues of Deuteronomy 28. Go to verse 60, what is it, 61. Watch this. We will show you how God will destroy your body because you're an abomination. Some of those things will be plagues. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So the Lord will bring these sickness upon your body for eating those unclean, abominable things till you've been destroyed. Right. So you'll be sitting up in a hospital bed with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, suffering and pain. Why? Because you broke God's laws. You won't find high blood pressure or high cholesterol in that Bible. But the Lord said the plagues that aren't written in the Bible will come upon you. Why? Because we read back in Romans that the wages of sin is death. The sin that you are committing right now, brother, one of the things is eating unclean foods. You're destroying your temple. You're destroying yourself. That's things that the world, that's things that the world tell you is okay. That's things that the world, that's things that the world says is okay. They say it's for you to do. But those things are the word that you shouldn't be doing. What you got? Okay. Things of the world are things that you shouldn't be doing. Why? Because those things are destroying you. Destroying your body, destroying your family, your household. Because they see you got a family. If they see you doing it, they might do it. If you got younger siblings or anything, anything they may see you doing, they may do it as well. So, 
So why would you continue the cycle of death for your people? Right. Stop that thing. You got to repent. Acts 3 and 19. You have to repent. You have to turn away from those ways. You got to be the light to your family. You got to turn away from those things. Rather you have, you want to have elders in your family, you're going to have youngsters in your family. You can be the light to both of them to guide them through this path of darkness and world. So watch this. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So it says repent so those sins can be blotted out. Because when you turn away from those things, God will forgive you for those sins. But if you don't, you will be destroyed by those sins. So God says repent, turn away from the wicked thing. So how do you repent? That repentance starts right here in your mind first. You have to change your ways. You have to be renewed in your mind, understanding the laws of God. Okay, so to understand this thing, the brother Barrett, we're going to get it again. Get Psalms 111. To understand the law of such commandments, you have to keep the law of such commandments. Then understanding will come. So when you start keeping the laws of eating clean foods and not eating unclean foods, you're like, oh, damn. Now I see why I should be eating clean foods because these are good for my body. Thus said the Lord, I shouldn't eat unclean foods because they're destroying my body. So watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. A wise man will understand that if I keep God's commandments, he'll keep me alive forever for eternity. But if I break God's commandments, he will destroy me. It'll be damnation for me for eternity. So the fear of the Lord is what? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. A good understanding is all they that do his commandments. So you on this earth, so obviously you have a father and a mother. In their household, they have rules for you, right? So you understood if you broke one of their rules, what would happen to you? There would be a punishment. So read that again for most. Verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So the same fear we have for the Lord, the same fear you have for your parents, you should have for the Lord ten times more. So the same fear you have for your parents? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good under understanding have all they that do his commandments. You follow the rules of your father's and mother's household because you had an understanding when you kept those rules. I understand if I keep these rules, I'm good, I get whatever I want. But if I break the rules, I have an understanding that I will be punished for. And that's what happened to us right here in the slave. That's why we went into slavery. Because we broke God's laws. We didn't want to keep the commandments holy. We didn't, we didn't want to keep the commandments. We didn't want to uh, keep the high holy days. We want to eat unclean foods. We want to sleep with other nations. We want to do all these wicked and abominable things that the Lord told us he hates. And those things he will destroy. The way we dress, the way we eat, the way we act, the way we treat each other, we'll be judged by all those things. Right. In the very end, when Christ returns, we'll be judged of the It'll be two books that'll be open. It'll be the Bible, and it'll be your life. Everything you did in your life. So watch this. Okay, all praise. So watch this. This is what we're going to all bring out to you right now. All these things, all these matters we judge by. So this day right now, this day has been recorded in the documents of the Lord. This day will be, will be represented in front of you in the day of the Lord when you're to be judged. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment. See that? The Lord said he will bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So with every secret thing, things that we don't see you doing, Things that you're doing in the dark and things that you're doing in the light. Whether, the, whether it's good or whether it's bad, you'll be judged on all those things. Read. That's it. That's it. Yeah, read uh, verse 14 again. Verse 14. For God shall bring every work. God will bring every work that you do, whether it's good or bad, into judgment mm -hmm. with every secret thing, mm -hmm. whether it be good or whether it be evil. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. So, we want to show you something else. The brother had brought up the fringes. So after today, you've been marked. You know wearing the fringes on your clothes is a commandment that you should be keeping. These are one of the commandments that remind you to keep the other commandments that would give you eternal life. How do you go about getting these? You can buy these in the store. You can buy the ribbon and blue in Walmart. You can buy the fringes in different stores and everything. Yeah, you can sew on your... Hey, just to be righteous, if you don't have anybody to sew, staple them to your clothes. 
God said he wanted to see a ribbon of blue and fringes in their clothes. Right. He don't care how they get up there. You can hot glue them up there. You can staple them up there. You can sew them yourself. Bring it out. But just being righteous. Don't we not judge people. God ain't judge me how how fly and how clean you look. He judge you based off the commandments you keep. Right. So rather your beard is long to the ground or close to your face, God is judging you off having a beard. Right. Rather you eat the clean food you eat, he not judging you off. Uh, how many scales the fish got on his body or how long the fins is. No, he judge you based off if that fish has fins and scales. Right. He judge you off all those matters. Bring it out. You know, we don't want to add or take away from the commandments. The Lord made it plain and simple for us. He said keep his Sabbath holy. How do you keep the Lord's Sabbath holy? Y'all y'all know how to keep the Lord's Sabbath holy? Don't work on Saturday. What else? Read your Bible. You, you read your Bible. What else you got? We're going to get it for you. Go to uh, Exodus. Exodus chapter 20. We're going to give you some some uh, cause I know all, uh, all praise to the Most High. How to keep the Sabbath day holy? Read. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So those six days is Sunday, being the first day of the week, to Friday. You that work is cut off right before sundown, so you won't profane the Sabbath and go into sundown. All right? right. So from Sunday to Friday. So starting Saturday at sundown, you can start working all the way up to Friday, right before sundown. You can stop, you stop working, all right? So Sunday through Friday, that's your time to work, do whatever you need to do, read. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. It In it thou shalt not do any work. So on that seventh day, from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, which is the seventh day of the week, the Holy Sabbath, don't do anything. The, the Lord loves you so much, he commanded you to relax. He, loved, that's, he commanded you to have some relaxation. Take a break away from the world. Take a break away from everything. Who can show you the other things he wants you to take a break from? You read? Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter. Hold on one second. I'm going to let him finish this up. I'm going to ask you a question, all right? In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. So there's this one thing. I'm going to get your question too. So the, even so you have a household, you have your wife, your children, none of them are to do anything. Now if you have any farm, like you have some farm animals, say you had an, uh, an ox or an ass or something like that, they were piling your land for your crops and things, they would have to rest on the Sabbath day too. Right. If you had any family members that was over that weekend, they have to keep the Sabbath holy. Nobody, to do, nobody in your family, people that come to your house, ought to profane the Lord's Sabbath. That's just one of the things. Well, what was your question? Well, they don't consider it like, because I got little kids with like, disability. They don't consider it working as you see, you have little children that have disabilities? Yeah. No, that's not considered working. All right, just... You're caring for your children. You caring for your children, I can sit at work and now if you go on, now we can go into some other laws dealing with the Sabbath that you should be doing concerning your children. You have to you have to take your children the same way we have to take care of our parents because the scripture say honor your father and our, and our mother. So the same way you take care of your parents, you will take care of your children the same way. But there's statutes that go along with that that go with the Sabbath. We're going to bring those out as well, all right? All right, let's get Exodus chapter 16, verse 23. There's other things that go along with, with taking care of your children lawfully. Watch this. Uh, Exodus chapter 16, verse 23. The book of Exodus chapter 16, verse 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, and see that ye will see. And that which remaineth over, lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So a part of you keeping the Sabbath holy and also caring for your children with disabilities. If there was anything that had to do with your children, uh, you, your children have to eat on the Sabbath day. So you will cook what you want to cook the day before the Sabbath and lay it up for the next day so you won't profane the Lord's Sabbath. If there's anything as far as uh, you had to, any type of thing you had to heat up, I don't know, I don't know if people heat up syringes or anything like that or medicine, but you would do that the day before. If you had to go shopping for your children, do that the day before the Sabbath. Watch this. 25 and 3. Watch this. There's other statutes that go along with the commandment of keeping the Sabbath holy. All right? So protect you and your children from damnation and being punished by the Most High God. Watch this. Exodus chapter 35, verse 3. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. 
Now that kindling fire is not going to warm your house if you have a fireplace or if your furnace is, is uh, burning for hot water. That fire is going to give me all near my tent. That fire is going into cooking food for your children on the Sabbath. So you want to prepare meals for your children the day before the Sabbath, things that they can eat on the Sabbath day. Right. So you can have salads, you have sandwiches, all types of sandwiches, all types of salads, all kinds of things your children and your wife and your family can eat that you can prepare the day before on the Sabbath day that they can have and enjoy those things. And you can still care for your children the way you need to without breaking God's laws. Watch this, something else too, watch this. Your children can have their medicine. Yes, they, they need their medicine to live. You can have their medicine on the Sabbath day. Watch this. The book of Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 31. And if the people of the land bring where? Or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day and that we would leave the seventh year and the exaction of every day. Now, you love your children, obviously. You say your children have disabilities and you do things you have to take care of. So if somebody, say uh, somebody come by selling, I don't know, some type of toys or something on the Sabbath day. They come knocking on your door and your kids say, Daddy, Daddy, I want that toy right there. This law says, let's read it again, on that day, on the Sabbath day, we won't be buying or selling on the Sabbath day. You have six days a week you can buy your children some toys if they want a toy or a snack or something like that. But on the Sabbath day, don't don't um, buy and sell from these merchants here. Hold your money until the, until the Sabbath is over. All right? This is how you're going to protect you and your children. Read. Verse 31. And if the people of the land bring where? Or any vittles on the Sabbath day. So that vittles is going vittles is going into food and other goods and products. Read. To sell that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day, and that we would leave the seventh year. So on that seventh day, when you hear those ice cream bells coming around on Saturday and they hit the ice cream truck, we won't buy anything from them. We won't buy or sell anything on that day. No candy lady, none of that. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.